Welcome to Building Trades 2022. I am Kate Lee. I'm the Executive Director of Education and Workforce for the South Bend Regional Chamber. Behind the box there that says South Bend Regional Chamber is Allison Herzig, who is the one who um, brings all this together and figures out how we're going to get all the schedules to collide, which is a, a great skill and we appreciate her. So thanks for that. So quick housekeeping. Um, all attendees are muted, but we still want to hear from you. So please use the chat function if you have any questions or to share comments. And please drop your school in the chat. So those of you who are out there, if you can drop your school in the chat just so we keep track of who is attending, that would be wonderful. This session is scheduled for 30 minutes. So when you have questions, just drop them in as we go so that we can keep on top of those and don't have a rush at the end. We want to thank all of our sponsors for Building Trades Week 2022, including our premier sponsor, St. Joseph Valley Building Trades. Please visit the Building Trades Week landing page to learn more about our sponsors, businesses, and Lots of facts about the wide variety of careers in building trades. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're excited to welcome Matt LaFree, Executive Manager for the Northern Indiana Chapter of the National Electrical Contractors Association, <gasps> NECA, which I used to think was NECA, but now I know it's NECA, uh, also a presenting sponsor for this um, event. So we appreciate that. And Joe Gamble, Training Director at the South Bend JATC, and he will explain exactly what that means. In this session, we're going to learn about electrical careers and two electrician apprenticeship programs available locally. So I'm just going to jump in and start asking questions. I'm going to get rid of the screen so that you can um, see the people who are talking instead of a, a screen. And um, I'll ask questions. But again, if you have questions along the way, please drop them into the chat and we will ask them. So I am going to start with Matt, and I'm going to have you just tell us what NECA is. Yeah, so NECA is, as you mentioned, the National Electrical Contractors Association. Uh, like any trade association, we uh, are existing for electrical contractor members. Uh, we provide education. We do the lobbying both in Indianapolis and in Washington. Uh, networking events is one of the biggest ones for contractors, especially starting out or um, smaller contractors that, you know, want larger resources, we kind of pull it together with the, uh, the larger guys as well. And uh, most importantly is probably our labor relations aspect. And so while I represent the employers, uh, we do work hand in hand with the IBEW, uh, the electrical union as well. I think you're still muted, Kate. Look, you think I would know, right? <laughs> but I should never mute myself just to quiet. So I'm going to um, hop to Joe on this one and have you um, explain that there are two, I understand there's two different apprenticeships. Can you kind of explain to students the difference and those opportunities? Okay. There's actually three apprenticeships. Two, three, a hundred. Three, two. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> there, there is the inside wireman, uh, which is a construction electrician, service electrician, uh, that's a five-year program. Uh, it's a degreed program. Uh, you do receive a degree from Ivy Tech. You also uh, receive a Department of Labor certification. Um, and that's, that's the one that a lot of our members already are a part of. We also have two three-year programs. One three-year program is uh, residential. That'd be houses, uh, small, um, uh, hotels, small businesses, um, and, and those people uh, go through a three-year program. They also are a degree program, um, and they work on our residential market. Our third one is what we call our IT department. Uh, not to confuse that with computer IT, but basically it's the infrastructures that build around IT. So it's the cabling, the fiber optics, the security systems, the camera systems, anything kind of techy falls into that. And that's a degree program as well. Excellent. So to kind of build on that, the reason why there are those three different kind of pathways, can um, Matt, can you share with the students what's happening in the construction industry today and how this impacts careers in electrical work? Yeah, there's actually a lot looking around South Bend. First of all, I saw uh, Riley pop up. So shout out to fellow Wildcats. Um, but if you look around just South Bend uh, and, and St. Joe County, the Michigan area, the casino is, is going up. A um, lot of work on Notre Dame's campus in the last few years. All those kinds of things, whether it's um, buildings you know, specific like that in construction or things that Joe just mentioned, where it 
could be the power coming into a new building. It could be maintenance within the building, or it could be some of the stuff that's going on inside, whether it's a data center or things like that. It's all electricity. And so that's something that uh, all of our members, all of our employers and uh, employees will, will put their hands on in some form or fashion. So there's uh, a myriad of opportunities within the electrical industry all over um, the, the area. So especially here locally, but anywhere in the country that you look, it's, it's something that's coming. <laughs> Nice. And so how do you see, and you might both want to answer this question, how do you see alternative energy impacting the role of electrical workers? Yeah, so even right here, my office is in uh, Michigan City, and uh, you may have heard in the news the last couple of years that NIPSCO is planning to close that plant down and, and take it down. Uh, obviously, the power that it's putting out and the one in uh, Wheatfield, which is in kind of a northwest Indiana area, uh, also kind of powers this this part of the, the state, uh, it's coming down. And so we've got to replace that with something, whether that's the wind farms, uh, there's a lot of solar farms going up. Um, and that's a huge thing, a huge opportunity right now in Indiana specifically, but also anywhere else in the country. Um, when you look at EV, uh, electrical vehicles, there's chargers, whether they're going, you're buying one and these go into your house, or there's business owners that are putting them up to, to accommodate people that own electric vehicles. Um, those are all coming fast and furious, it seems like, here here in the area. Uh, there changes the certain thing, right? It's right. Keep on top of that. <laughs> it's the constant. So, Joe, can you kind of walk us through the apprenticeship program, like the training, the education, the length of the program, and how pay works? Because, you know, students are interested in, like, what happens? How do I, you know, how do I get paid for my work? And I think earn, earning while you learn is, like, the greatest <laughs> gift a student can get if they're interested in something like this. Well, one of the things we're really proud of is the fact that we have a joint effort. NECA supplies us with great contractors and works directly with us, actually has board members sitting on our board. The IBW has people sitting on our board. We meet together monthly. We make sure everybody is uh, up to speed. Um, so what we do is we start out with the educational process, which is up to 2,000 hours of learning on the job. So if you're selected as an apprentice, the first thing we would do is connect you with a contractor that can use your skills. Them, the contractor and the journeyman on the job site spend 2,000 hours helping train you to be an electrician. And then two nights a week, usually during a standard school year from August to May, you come into our uh, building. I have uh, certified instructors that it teach you the fundamentals and the theory behind how electricity works. Uh, for the five-year program, obviously that takes on a five-year focus. Um, the cost for that to each apprentice is basically their book fee, which is about $600. Um, the college education is free. Our, we supply between NECA and IBW, we pay for all the rest of your education. So, the degree program, everything else is paid for. Um, in a, the three-year program is exactly the same. You would go to school two nights a week and you would learn on the job. I would connect you with a contractor. Um, same thing with the residential program. Uh, our partnership has worked since 1946. We've been doing this. We've been a registered apprenticeship and uh, we're pretty good at it. And we try and make sure that we give the best possible education to the students. And I've talked to, so Isa at Ivy Tech, who is, helps with the, the book learning side of the apprenticeships. Um, it, it sounds like there's really great services to support students through this and to really help make sure that people obtain the skills and get to the, the point where they can really take full advantage of these apprenticeship opportunities. So something else to remember in our community. So to apply for an apprenticeship, do you need a high school diploma or equivalency? Yes, um, our requirements are a high school um, graduation or equivalent. You have to have a minimum of a C in first year algebra. Um, we do a lot of math. Electronics and electricity has got a lot of math involved in it. Not, not so much to scare someone away, but, but there, are, there is math there. Um, with that, then uh, we would do an application process. Uh, after the application, we bring you in and we test you with a, a simple math, about a 30 minute test for math um, skills starts out from basic math skills and builds. 
and then a reading comprehension because in ours, uh, if you need to read um, blueprints or you need to read manuals, we want to make sure you can understand them. Uh, once you get uh, a grade out of that, our passing grade is uh, a four out of a nine as the maximum. So it's a bell curved type of thing. We then schedule you for an interview. You come in, we take an interview with four members of NECA, four members of the IBW. Um, we make sure that Everybody gets the same uh, questions, the same responses are, are gauged so that somebody can't throw a curveball at the student. And then we rank each student accordingly to that. And, uh, and then we take the top students out of that group. Um, we also have another program that's called the CW program that gives them some uh, ability to learn within the program. The only thing that we ask is that you must be 18 by the time you take your job um, assignment. So if you're a high school senior and now is the perfect time to apply. If you apply now, um, we can get you through the process and hopefully by the time you graduate, if you're ranked at the high part of the group, we'll have a job available for you. So let's say someone doesn't um, apply right out of high school. Do you have people who come into the apprenticeship program kind of a little bit further, like when they've been working for a few years? We have all, all different groups. We have uh, military, ex-military. Um, a couple of years ago, we had a 60-year-old gentleman that decided he wanted to change careers and became an apprentice. Um, we've had upper 40s. Um, we are over 10% female population. Um, so we have a lot of females that are in our trade right now. Um, in our apprenticeship presently, um, we're, we're becoming more and more diverse every day, and I'm very proud of that fact. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're really excited about how things are going. Nice. And I think it's, uh, I always, when I talk to students who are in high school, I always say, just because you don't know exactly where you're going when you're 18 doesn't mean you won't get there when you're 30. I mean, it's just, Sometimes you're just not quite ready. So you go to work and you learn a lot and you do the best you can. But and then you say, I really do like that electrical thing. So I'm going to go after it. And it's not too late to jump in there, which is proven by the 60 year old who went after it. So that's pretty awesome. Great story. So um, I'm going to um, hop back to Matt real quick and have him tell us about his career pathway. How did you end up where you are? Yeah, I took the I took the roundabout uh, way that uh, Joe just kind of described. So uh, I went to college after high school and moved to Indianapolis, uh, ended up taking some jobs in finance uh, initially right out of college. Um, and to, to keep it kind of concise, it was uh, home finance, yeah, mortgages. I did personal finance and then I was in the, the car world for a long time, uh, sold cars for a spell and then uh, did most of the finance manager in, in the back. And then uh, by kind of uh, silly luck, I guess, the uh, NECA's Midwest regional office is in Mishawaka. It was in Mishawaka at the time. Now it's up on Notre Dame's campus. And so uh, they reached out to me through, you know, uh, uh, recruiting, whatever. And, and it's completely different from anything I've done before, but also it's a perfect culmination of everything I've done before. So uh, between sales and, and money and everything else, Nika's a little bit more than, than just the trade. We're doing more of the business aspect of it. Um, I, I personally am not a journeyman or never, never been a part of the electrical world. So I have a, a very big appreciation for what Joe does and, and what his students go through. <laughs> For sure. And so that's when we'll jump into Joe talking about his career pathway and how you guys have both ended up on this screen together, which is kind of interesting, right? So I actually started out, uh, I went to a trade school and, and received a degree in electronics. Um, had a dead end job that I didn't really care for. Um, <laughs> met uh, a, a Nika person took a job with uh, one of our former contractors um, and uh, went to work for a, a man named John Martell, who owns now owns Martell Electric, um, worked for him, learned the trade, realized that I didn't know what I was doing, um, <laughs> that I had a, a degree in electronics, but the electrical industry is much more diverse. Uh, so I then took a job with one of the other local contractors. And then over the course of my career, went through the apprenticeship program, became a 21 year teacher of the program, uh, a journeyman the entire time. That's one of the nice things about what we do is all of my instructors work all day long. 
and then come to the school and teach four hours a night. They, they, they come in to, to, and they're not outdated. They're constantly working in the field. They're constantly attached to, to the industry. Um, and then about a year and a half ago, um, I applied for this position and, and took it and, and am enjoying being back involved with young people. Um, I was a coach, high school coach for 21 years as well. So um, high school kids, I have a great heart for those young people. What did you coach? I was a baseball coach at John Glenn. Oh, nice. And okay. at Riley, by the way. Oh, there you go. Those Wildcats, they're, and they're here. They're represented. Yep. <laughs> represented everywhere. That's right. On all sides of the screen. That's awesome. So I saw a drop in the chat from Mr. Hauk. Uh, asking about starting pay and schedule. I'm assuming he means the pay schedule, like as you go through the steps of the apprenticeship. Um, what we do is we gauge our base pay off of a journeyman wireman's pay scale for a first year apprentice. Um, once you're done with your first year, we you can then choose which of the three, and there are three different pay scales involved. So for ease of application, we'll start with the inside wireman process. So uh, an apprentice starts out as a student um, right now this year at $14.60 an hour. Every year that they go through the program, they get a 10% bump in pay. That's a very large bump in pay, pay for most people that have worked out in the industry. By the time they're a fifth year, if they would graduate, um, would have graduated last June because it will change this June. Um, they would be making thirty six forty an hour um, on the check. Now, Mr. Hawk and I have talked several times. One of the things that that we do differently in our partnership with NECA is <coughs> your added benefits like health care and and uh, pensions and annuities are a separate dollar item. So. NECA doesn't ask for, we don't ask for um, to take more money out of your paycheck for health care. That's negotiated at the, at the time that NECA and the IBEW negotiate wages every year. So that money separated out and made sure that your health care is taken care of. It's an incredible health care program. Um, there are pensions, there are annuities, um, the the average um, journeyman wireman, if they start out at 20, 22 years old or even younger, the day they retire, they'll probably be making the same dollar amount that they made their last check for the rest of their career. We, we really try and take care of our members. That's, I mean, and, and as young people, they, you may not completely wrap your head around that, but talk to your parents and ask them how valuable that is as they think about um, their retirement and, or your grandparents or whoever is retiring close to you. And they'll tell you that that's a really good thing to be thinking about at a young age. So there's and, another and, question. Oh, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. And, and the thing that that's hard to explain and that parents can really explain is if you go look for a job at another place and they say they're making $25 an hour, they're going to ask you for healthcare cost back, or they're going to ask you to contribute to the 401k that's taken care of on top of that $36 an hour. So, so we're not coming back in and taking more money out of your paycheck after the fact. And that's the bare minimum you can make as a journeyman wireman. So when you go to another contractor, the contractor already knows what you're going to make. They, they don't come to you and negotiate. You know, they say, okay, I know that's what I'm going to hire you in at. That's, it's comfortable for the, for the contractor. They know what they have. And the, the journeyman can move around to other contractors. Because basically, that's what we do a lot of. We finish a project, that's our job, we move on to another one. I think of it as a bench, you kind of have a bench. And yes, we exactly. And hold on to other teams, yeah. Awesome, so we had a question, in a given year, how many people take the test, the aptitude test, and on average, how many students do you take into the program? We usually get between three and 400 um, applications. Um, Last year, we took um, 56 apprentices. We feel over the next five to seven years, um, Matt and I have talked about this a lot, 
that we'll probably be taking on an average of 50 for the next couple of years to make up for our aging uh, demographics. Um, over, to, over a quarter of our um, manpower is gonna retire in the next seven years. So we have to replace them now so that they're learned up and they, they understand what they're doing before, before they leave us. So, so we can make sure that we're giving out great product to our consumers. Excellent. So another question, after you graduate from the uh, apprenticeship program, how easy is it to move to different states for work? Number one, no, because you're all going to stay here and work and make South Bend in our region, maybe even the state of Indiana a better place. So don't be thinking you're going to run off. But in case you wanted to, like, what, how, how easy is it? Is it portable, I guess? The question. So uh, the IBW's um, partnership with the Electrical Training Alliance and NECA's partnership, we have designed it so that the net, that if you have our journeyman classification, other than a specific license for that region, you can move to any other IBW local anywhere in the United States and take work. We have, I have young people that they'll top out, um, that's what we call graduation, and they'll jump in a, a van and they'll drive down to Texas and do winter work down in Texas because they hate the cold weather. And then they'll turn around and come right back to us in the summer. Um, you can work anywhere in the United States and in Canada because you're an IBW member. Nice. So um, I think I'll go to Joe with this one. Uh, knowing that there's a bajillion different directions you can go with your electrical skills, what would a typical day be like? Let's go with a typical day for a first-year apprentice. A typical day for a first-year apprentice, you would get up, first of all, look at the weather, because we all know Indiana decides its weather on the hour. Um, you would need to be on the job site before 7 a.m. Uh, you would meet your journeyman. Uh, they would lay out what they were going to do for the day, gather the material. Um, we provide you with tools as a first year apprentice. So you would have your tools as well. Um, the journeyman would work hand in hand with you and explain to you, this is how we bend conduit. This is how we install this. And they would spend an eight hour day on the job site. Um, after their eight hour day is over with, uh, if it is a school night, they would come to my building by 530. They would check in with their instructor. They'd have their homework completed. The instructor would go over their homework, start teaching them new, new processes. Maybe it's conduit bending or, or maybe it's DC theory or something like that. We do some hands-on labs here as well. We have a very large lab area mm -hmm. and, uh, and they'll work there until about nine o'clock at night, about 915. Then they go home and they've got their homework assignment and the day starts bright and early at six o'clock the next morning, <laughs> six so or many, seven. How many days a week are school days? Two nights. Okay, two nights. I think you said that earlier, but I was like two or three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Two nights a week. We also every Friday have a study group. So if you're struggling, I have an instructor here available to you to do everything. If it's book work side, or maybe they're struggling with, hooking up circuits and they just don't understand our journeyman will, our instructor will go in the back room and we've got these large boards that they can practice on and they can wire equipment and we can make sure they're safe. And we, um, we do a large amount of safety training. We are the safest, in my opinion, um, training facility there is because we make sure the first thing they do before they even walk on a job site is get OSHA trained and to make sure in their boot camp, they have a 40 hour boot camp, make sure that they are safe on the job site. We wanna make sure all of our members go home every single night with all fingers and all toes. It's a good goal. I like that goal. I have a brother-in-law who's, I call him the big power electrician where they go in and shut down plants and clean up the whole system and then boot it back up. And I will tell you, there's nothing normal for him. They travel all over the place and he sometimes works 16 hour days so they can compress it into a shorter day so they can get home. And, but he loves his work and he loves like solving the problems and finding the problems before they happen. So I think 
an electrical, my guess is being a problem solver is an incredibly helpful trait. So what, yeah, other, what other kind of, what, like what kind of skills that you wouldn't think of as like things you learn in school do students need to think to develop and bring to the electrical training? Basic communication skills, being able to talk with people, being able to interact with people is, is very big. Um, one of the things we tell them right away is, is you can't control a lot of things in your life, but you can control showing up and showing up on time. That's critical to us because the entire job, construction in general, all interlinks. The carpenters need us there. The plumbers need us there. We all, so if we're always there, if we're ready to work, um, being able to uh, critical think, being able to see a, a problem and say, okay, this building is built this way. If I need to get from point A to point B, how can I get there? Uh, there you know, the math skills are, are used quite a bit, but they're not really um, used a lot until you get to the higher levels like as a service maintenance person or, or someone working in a factory repairing large items. The great thing about our industry is, is there's a niche for so many different workers. We have over 1,100 members, and I would say 60% of them do specialized things that they love, jobs that they love, that they have chosen running big projects or driving a service truck. I drove a service truck for 35 years, was in Washington, D.C. and Missouri and Chicago and New York and just all kinds of places where you just get to really meet new people every day. And so it, you just learn to do things. Uh, one of the things I love saying when I see my grandchildren, used to be my children when they were Matt's age, but... Um, <laughs> But uh, the, um, my, my grandchildren is, I can walk by Notre Dame Stadium and point to it and say, I built that. You know, when, when I go by uh, Four Winds Field, I built that. Um, I was on the original project that built that building, that entire stadium. So those are things that you can show people every day. When, you, when you're working in other entities, it's hard to explain your job, but all I have to do is point. That's, that's testimony right there. And it's obviously why you love what you do. So that, that's a good thing for students to hear. Um, and a good thing for adults to hear, I think. So I'm going to ask you both this question. What do you know now that you wish you knew when you were in school? I will start with Matt on that one. I wish I knew a lot, I guess. Um, there's a lot of things that you're, you're just not opened up to. And there's, there's such a finite amount of time that you're in school. It seems like it takes forever, but um, I know it's a cliche thing to say, but it's once you're actually out in the world, you realize how much you don't actually know. Um, and there's, you know, it's important to do well in school. And, and like Joe said, you got to have a, a certain GPA coming out to, to join the program. And that's, that goes for a lot of different things, whether you're going to college or, or other, other, I've, I had to be, uh, they check my transcripts when I applied for jobs out of college. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that just always be open to, to, uh, new ways of, of thinking and, uh, keep an open mind and keep an open, open eyes, open ears when you're, when you're looking at opportunities, uh, to help or to learn, to listen. Um, someone always, someone, I learned this maybe four years ago, I think a guy told me you've got two ears and one mouth and that's so you can listen twice as much as you ever talk. And so that was a, that was a great thing. I wish I did know that was, if there's one thing, it was that years ago. <laughs> It's an ongoing challenge. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Joe? What do you wish you knew when you were in school? I wish I would have exposed myself to more knowledge within the school. Just things that take you out of your comfort zone. You know, um, taking a shop class. A lot of my classes were business related. I wanted to be an accountant when I first came out of school. Um, financially, I couldn't afford it at that time. So I took a technical school thing and fell in love with it. Um, but I wish I would have found out what kind of a learner I am because there are physical learners and there are you know, people that learn great through books and stuff like find out how you learn and then gravitate towards the education that, that's gonna make you the best and happiest person you wanna be. And I wish I would have known about the trades 
at 18 or 17 or 16, it, um, it would have changed my life a whole lot quicker. But I had to take the hard road for a few years to figure it out. And sometimes you end up right where you're supposed to be, right? Yep. And you keep pursuing new things. That's wonderful. So thanks so much, Matt and Joe. I can't believe we're already at 2.30. That felt like a really fast half hour. So thanks to you for all the insight and wisdom you've shared with this audience and to all the students and educators who attended this session. We encourage everyone to visit the Building Trades Day landing page. Uh, all the panels are being recorded. So if you do not catch one of the sessions that we're having this week, you can jump on and watch those later. You want to go back and catch again some of the wisdom that Joe and Matt laid down. It's going to be out there in perpetuity so they can find it. So <laughs> make the kids watch it, make the grandkids watch it. It'll be great. Yeah. And um, so thank you again so much. Appreciate it. And everybody go forth and have a great day. Stay warm. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.